see how my stocks are doing today, huh? Oh, looks like Facebook's up. Cruise is up again. Skyworks up again. Alibaba, US Steel. Man, 2018 was such a crap year, but I gotta say, 2019 has been amazing. Like Big Sean said, last night it took an L, but today I bounced back. Like it's amazing. Eli stock up, Apple stock up. Every one of my stocks is up. Whirlpool into it. Tesla! Holy smokers, guys, Tesla stock absolutely crashed through the floor today, down 13% on the day, down $45 per share. That is a massive move down for Tesla. And Tesla has been a hot stock the last few months when the market was in trouble, October, November, December. Tesla stock was roaring. It was just, it was the strongest stock by far I had in my portfolio and it was doing so amazing. And now all of a sudden today, we've just had a massive, massive drop in Tesla stock. So I wanna talk about why this happened. I wanna talk about my opinion on this. I wanna share with you, obviously my cost basis is on Tesla and if I'm gonna buy more shares of Tesla, if I'm gonna buy more shares of Tesla, what price do I need it at to buy those shares? So hope you guys enjoy this as always. By the way, first off, I just wanna let you guys know, last month I held my conference here in Las Vegas. It was an amazing event, like one of the best days of my life, one of the coolest days of my life. And a lot of people had suggested that I had, you know, basically a team of videographers film the entire event. So I went ahead and did that because not everybody could make it out to Vegas for the whole event. So what I went ahead and did is I made 20 coupons to get access to the entire replay of the conference. So the first 20 people that get that, that should be the pinned comment down there. You guys can get the event for 70% off, guys. So I hope you enjoy that. Graham Stephan's real estate investing presentation alone was, was like worth the price of admission. Let me just tell you, that was the best real estate investing presentation I've ever seen in my life. Like the way he broke it down, it was amazing. Also covered branding, stock market investing, like a lot of different things. You guys can check it out if you want, all right? Let's get into this. So Tesla cuts 3,000 jobs as Elon Musk aims to make more cars for less money. Tesla is reducing its workforce by 7%, more than 3,000 jobs according to a recent staffing estimate as the company continues its effort to bring lower cost electric vehicles to the market. CEO Elon Musk announced the layoffs on Friday in an email to the staff saying the company is facing an extremely difficult challenge. That is a quote from him there, an extremely difficult challenge. He also says, we unfortunately have no choice but to lay off employees, Musk said. There isn't any other way. The company will also be eliminating all but the most important contractor in temps, okay? That is big news. That is big news and uh, kind of bad news, I guess you could say, okay? Now, there are kind of a few worries on Wall Street today and why this stock is really crashing so much. So one is, now that the stock has moved down so big, they might have to make that $920 million debt payment. Essentially, if the shares aren't at $360 by March 1st, they're gonna have to pay that if it was over $360, like it was heading toward. Um, basically, you'd be in a position where they wouldn't have to make that $920 million payment. So now Tesla's in a position where they might have to actually pay that, which is gonna take a massive amount of cash off that balance sheet, okay? That's the first big worry on what people are talking about. The second part is demand, okay? People are saying, whoa, Tesla already cut jobs, you know, uh, recently, which was a few months ago, okay? And now they make this massive cut. Is Tesla have a demand issue there? Is there a demand issue where just not enough people are basically ordering Model 3s and the different Teslas out there and, and Tesla's in a situation where they gotta cut back workforce, okay? So I wanna talk about this on a few different levels, okay? So first thing I wanna talk about here is the Model 3. Let's talk about Model 3 for a second. So what do we know about Model 3? First off, it's by far and away the best-selling electric vehicle out there, and it's a best-selling luxury vehicle. It technically kind of meets that class of luxury vehicles because of the price point. So we know it's 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 been selling amazing. However, the $35,000 Model 3, which is I think what the masses are kind of looking for out there, is still not available at this point in time. Most people, when they go to buy a car, they buy it on a loan, okay? So the, the fact that Tesla, with the, some of the rebates and whatnot, can maybe get it under 40, a lot of people honestly want to pay around $35,000 for that Model 3, take out the loan on it, because that's just how most people are, okay? So that's not even available yet, and that's where I think a lot of the Tesla Model 3 demand is. So we gotta understand that. Also, they haven't started, or they're just kind of starting out to produce for China and for Europe, all right? They're basically in this first half of 2019, they're supposed to start you know, manufacturing a lot of Model 3s for China and Europe. Those are gonna be the higher end models. Once again, none of the cheaper models are gonna be available in either of those markets. So there are kind of two pieces to that. One is obviously there's gonna be a ton of pent up demand for Model 3s whenever the $35,000 model comes out, which we don't know when it's gonna come out, but there's gonna be a lot of pent up demand. The second part of that is obviously the Shanghai factory is supposed to open in some capacity in 2019. It's not gonna be finished in 2019, but it's gonna open in some capacity, meaning Tesla's gonna hire 
hire a massive amount of Chinese workers over there to fill the demand for China for Tesla, okay? And eventually that will happen in Europe as well because a Gigafactory will open in Europe eventually. So the amount of workers you need in Fremont or at the Gigafactory out in Reno, Nevada, eventually that's just to fulfill the, the US orders. The Chinese orders, and as well as most of Asia, will be fulfilled by the, the, the Chinese Gigafactory in Europe. Eventually, once they get that Gigafactory open, will be filled by the obviously the European uh, Gigafactory. So that's something to take into account there. Second part is as far as Model Y, okay? So this is gonna be their SUV that they're supposed to show off at some point in 2019. We don't know when it will actually go into production, maybe 2020. And the Model Y is really exciting because this is gonna be their more affordable SUV. Uh, essentially, if you want a Tesla SUV right now, you gotta get the Model X, right? That SUV, you're, you're pushing 100,000 plus dollars if you want that. One, there's a very limited amount of the population that can afford a hundred thousand plus dollar SUV. The other part is a lot of people that can afford it don't want to spend a hundred plus thousand dollars on an SUV. Okay. That's just ridiculous. So I think there's going to be a lot of demand. If they can come in at a $50,000 price point or 60,000, basically anything under $60,000 price point for the SUV, I think you're going to open up a lot of demand out there. And folks like myself who haven't really uh, got out, you know, went out and bought a Tesla yet may look at that and say, okay, you know, we got a family, we can, we can have an SUV that's all electric and we can get it for a price point of 50,000 maybe or maybe 60,000, that's worth doing. But a lot of us just don't, either don't have the money or just honestly don't wanna buy a hundred plus thousand dollar electric SUV. Like that's just a lot of money to part with for a car, guys. You're basically paying like a supercar type price. Like that's a lot of money. So I think that's gonna be a big demand driver in the future, okay? So the, the worries about demand, I, I can understand in the short term, but if you're looking at this from a long-term game, I, I, the, the demand is still gonna be massive for Tesla. And, and if you look at Tesla's numbers they put up in 2018, there's really no one doing the type of numbers they are, especially in the electric field, but even in the overall car field, like their numbers are just ridiculous. They're up there with some of the way cheaper cars, which is incredible, okay? So that's something to take into account there. And as far as the debt payment, you know, you guys know what I, I said last week, basically, I, I begged Elon Musk to basically raise money. I think he should raise money, especially if he has to make that debt payment, but I think he should also raise money so they can get the, the, the services built out more and so they can get kind of the pre-owned cars and whatnot built out more. That's my personal opinion, kind of hearing other people's opinion out there. So as far as Tesla, we own in a couple of accounts here. So we're still up on the position, but not up obviously nearly as much as we were. Um, so this account, we own like 50 shares, 283 cost basis on that one. And this other account, we only own six shares. So 271 cost basis on that. I'm very interested in acquiring more Tesla shares, but I need it to get down to somewhere in the 280 to 270 level. If it gets down to the 280, 270 level, I'm absolutely very interested in buying more Tesla shares and making that into a much bigger position. But as of right now, still around this 300, I'm not quite there yet as far as saying, okay, let me go Go put some more uh, money in Tesla just because there are a lot of stocks still right now that I feel like are good values other than just Tesla out there and some that are a little less risky obviously because Tesla does have this massive debt coming due and obviously it's a newer business model and whatnot so they still got to prove that out so as far as me looking at Tesla I'm still extremely bullish on the long term but as far as buying more shares I wanted to get back in that 280 to 270 level which it could do it could do if all this negativity just kind of keeps feeding up which we know Tesla when there starts to get a lot of negativity in the press it just is like a snowball going down a hill and it just ramps up and ramps up and that can really push the shares down. So if it gets back to that 280, 270 level, I'm absolutely going to acquire some more shares. But uh, until then, I'm just kind of holding out and watching. So anyways, I want to know your guys' opinion on Tesla down there in that comment section. Are you buying any Tesla shares? Have you bought any Tesla shares? I would love to hear from you guys. By the way, if you want access to that full conference for 70% off, 20 coupons I made, that's going to be the pinned comment down there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.